Hello, this is Bob McClellan, and I will be demonstrating bulk document generation and printing using SharePoint and OpenXML. This demonstration uses two inputs, an XML file with some parameters and data in it, along with a master Word document that will be used as the master for all the generated documents. First, you can see here the XML document. It has two main portions. The automation element has a couple of attributes, a master and printer. The master tells the name of the document that will be used to generate all the individual documents. And the printer tells the name of the printer that it will be sent to automatically. Below that, we have repeated record elements. The demonstration program will generate a specific document with each one of those records. Now I will show you how to create the master document and how it will connect these records to that master document. So here is a just a regular Word document that I created. In, or, in order to do this example, I wanted to put content controls on each of these so that it will know how to connect to the data. But to do that, we have to turn on the developer tab in the ribbon. So I go to Customize Ribbon, click on the check mark for Developer, and click OK. Now I can go to Developer, and to make this value a content control, this 000 is just a placeholder, I'm going to go here and put in a rich content control click on the properties and set a tag for it. Now my tag will match this element name right here, invoice num. And that's the program will then use that to replace this content control with the value from that record. And then I'll do the same thing here. Put in the properties. I want just company name there. And so on through all of these. The last one here is the total. Now you notice there are other values in here that I'm not including. The program doesn't require that they all be there, just that every tag that isn't a con con content control will appear here. So now I can save this document. And my master is ready. My XML is ready. Now I'm going to use SharePoint to manage all these documents. So I'll open up my SharePoint site. This is the uh, standard one as installed on the virtual machine that I am using. And I go here to the menu and say new document library. I'll put the name in automation and create. Now I can see my new document library has been created. I will add the documents. Those documents are in my project directory. So I'm going to upload the XML. And my master document. At this point, everything is set to run the sample program. I'll talk about the details of the sample program in a minute, but for now let's see the results. And it will begin doing its processing. Normally this would run without any intervention and direct these to right to the printer, but since I'm using the virtual machine and don't have a printer connected, I have to type the name for each of the output files that the XPS printer is generating.
and that's the last file. My process will finish up. And let's take a look at the results. I'll go to my documents. And here are my invoices. They are in XPS format. And this is exactly how it would look if it were going to a printer. Next, I'm going to just step through the program and explain a little bit about how it works. Uh, it does have a lot of references because it uses so many pieces of SharePoint, Word Automation Services, and printing. The first step will be to read the XML file. In order to read that XML file, I have to access the document library on SharePoint. So that's the, what's happening in these first statements here. I find the document library. And that document library is set in an argument. If you need to change the arguments, you can just look at the properties. Or if you were doing it from a command line, which this could also be done, uh, you would just specify those arguments. Here are my arguments. It's the name of the site and the document library name. As so the program gets the site and document library name, then it opens up the site, reads the automation XML from that site, then finds the attributes that it needs to run the program, which are the master and printer attributes, and saves those for use throughout. The next thing is to open and read the master document. There are a number of steps here, but that's uh, just how you read a document from a SharePoint library. It will put it into OpenXML, which is the word processing document object, is the main object there. I then call a couple of methods, so create custom XML and bind controls. This changes the content controls and binds them to a custom XML part in that document using OpenXML. I'll show those methods in a moment. The next step is then to loop through all the records. Now I've already created the first one in the process of binding the controls. So I'll skip that in this loop and create the rest of them from the records in the XML file, one by one. And so this loop only has to replace the, cu replace the custom XML part. It doesn't have to do the binding of the controls. And so it'll just write that out for each document and save it in the SharePoint document library. Next, I set up a Word Automation Services job that will automatically convert all of the Word documents into XPS files. The conversion to XPS makes the printing step much quicker. Otherwise, it would have to open Word to print each document, which would take quite a bit longer. The printing uses a couple of objects, the XPS document writer and the print queue, in order to direct each of those files to the named printer from the XML attribute that was at the beginning. And that's the end of the bulk printing process. Let's take a look at the two other X open XML pieces. One is create custom XML. This creates the custom XML part with a new GUID assigned to it. That GUID will be used to link the custom XML to the controls. Bind controls is just a matter of going, finding each of the custom controls, which are known as SDT properties in the open XML element name is that. And we add a data binding, binding with the correct tag and GUID. That tag refers to the record. That, that little XPath value there is the record from the custom XML, and the tag is the one that it retrieves from the content control itself. So as you can see, this is very adaptable. Uh, you just have to set up the files, and the program will work the same every time. It doesn't have to be changed. 
and you can generate your documents. So this concludes the demonstration. Thank you.